If you're in my homeroom yesterday, you saw what volume is. We, yesterday, we want to check to see if full or liters is greater than a gallon. So we poured in four liters into a gallon. That space that we poured into, so if you ever filled up a cup, that area inside of the cup is what the volume is. It's how much something can hold. So for instance, your water bottles, how much volume does it have? How much can it hold? If you carry around a box, how much volume does it have? How much can be held inside that box without going over the top? So we're going to be doing a lot with cubes, squares, and shapes like that. Example one. Yes, Reese. A prism is a prism is a three-dimensional shape, just like the one on the board. Question. Did you say what's a rectangle shape? I said no. I said why is it a rectangle shape? Because a prism. So, for instance, if I say you're a person. That's not a lot of detail, right? Like you're just, you know, that's a human being that breathes and speaks and probably looks at the sky, clouds, and dreams of bodies. I know you guys all do that. Now, when you say prism, that's like just saying you're a person. Now, if I were to say you are a, let's say, a five foot five person, that's like saying you're a rectangular prism. The same, this is a marquise. That's like saying a rectangular prism. You're just being specific. So when we talk about rectangles, we're talking about things that have four sides, like a box. We're talking about boxes. Make sense? That's a good question, actually. Why is it? But prism is just a general term. Rectangular prism makes it more specific. Now, how many one-inch cubes are needed to form this rectangular prism? A one-inch cube is a cube whose edges are one inch long. On your notes, in the very top by example one, or by the I can statement, I need you to write down this formula because this is a very important formula that you will need for your exit ticket, your assignments. Super, super important. Volume. Depends on. Volume. Oh, Equals length. Times width times height. Because volume is very close to area. When you have an area of a square, you're talking about the inside of it. When we're talking about volume, we're talking about inside the cube, inside the box. Like how if I put your head in a box, how much of the volume would be taken up inside the box? So when we're talking about that, and we're talking about prisms, like Reese was talking about, it's got more than just a flat surface. It's not just a piece of paper. It actually has depth. You can actually put your hand inside a box. So you also need to add in the height. So essentially, all you're doing today is you got to figure out what the length is, the width is, and the height is. Then you multiply them together. So on this cube which you should copy down in your notes so that you know what you're talking about i like your cube jonathan you really good job make sure you put the measurements inside your square because that's another big part of this Ooh, they give you a payment for your good notes well i like how you added that little extra part on the bottom So, London, what is the length? Right. So, I'm going to use red. Here's the length. Here's the length. So, we got five times. What's the width? I'm going to use blue for it. Destiny? Yes, it would be three. So, blue is for the width. Circle the width. Three times, and I'll use purple for the next one. What is the height then? The only number that's left, Kingston? Right. Height is four.
So all you have to do is what's what is three or five times three times four? Marquise? Um, it's still like we got to do the whole. Can we still write it a different way where you got to be like the width, width, width times height? You know what I mean? That one? Well, you mean like width times length times height or height times length times width? No, we still. It doesn't matter because of the distributive property. The fact that if you were to, no, associative, if you were to move the numbers around in any order, you'll still get the same process. So for instance, if you're like me, I would rather do five times four, then multiply by three. That's a lot easier than five times three times four. Anywho, McKenna? Six? 60, that is correct. Now, what about the label though? Because remember with area, we were multiplying length times width and we had a squared, so put a two. Now we got three things. Seven? Not squared because we have one more depth. We actually have depth. When you square it, it's like a flat surface, like the floor you're standing on. Huh? Yeah, cubed. And how do you know that you're right? Because you have an inch plus an inch plus an inch equals inches cubed. So you add it over to this. Think so? So why would two, why is it squared so three is cubed? Okay, good question. So let's say you have two inches times two inches, okay? Mm -hmm. What you have here for squaring, London? It would be four inches squared because, give me a second here, it is, in parentheses, two times two, inch times inch. So two times two is four. You really, what, what do you do with inches? Like you multiply them together, but like they can't, don't change into a mega inch or they don't change to a foot or anything. So you just say that inches squared, that means you have two inches. Now with volume, you got two inch times two inch times two inch, which in parentheses looks like two times two times two times inch times inch times inch, which gives you, what's two times two times two? Antoine? Eight. Eight inches cubed because you got three inches. So Kingston? That's another way to look at it. I look at it like this. Now, if you want to say three-dimensional, or another way you can do it is, how many numbers are you multiplying together? Three, right? Mm -hmm. So your answer has to have it cubed. Squared, how many are you multiplying, or how, area, you're multiplying two of them together, so you gotta put a two for square. Does that make any more sense? Yeah. Essentially, the exponent you put is based off how many numbers you multiply together. So going off that knowledge, example two, what is the volume of a cube whose edges are 10 centimeters long? I want you to copy down that question into your notes so that you know what you're talking about. Example two. Java? 
-hmm. All right, so what is the volume of a cube whose edges are 10 centimeters long? First of all, is a cube like, is it like a rectangle? Does it have different sides or all, are all the sides the same for a cube? Devin? It is, but all, all the sides the same, Destiny? Right, so if you were to draw a 3D cube, let's see if I can do it. If I, it's been a while. I haven't drawn a lot. That's a chunk. So if you were to draw a cube, a really bad cube, looks more like a house. I need to practice more. We need to bring art class back. I blame Kamari. Um, but, so that means that this would just be 10 centimeters. The width would be 10 centimeters. And the height would be 10 centimeters. Because it's a cube, they're all the same length. It's not a rectangle. A rectangle usually has different lengths. So, London, what is the formula we are using for today? What is the formula that you had to write down before for today? The very important one that you should have circled and starred, and you shouldn't be sleeping right now, Asia, on the air. <laughs> Make sure your eyes or your hands are off your face because I think you're sleeping. It's not me. I don't think I don't want you to sleep, but the impressions you're giving are making me think that. Kingston? Right. So every single time you show your work, it's got to be volume equals length times width times height. That's the first step you should always do is rewrite the formula. So I should see your pencils moving. Rewrite the formula. Volume equals length times width times height. Now we got to plug it in. Step two, you got to plug it in. So what would you write for the length, the width, and the height? Reese, what's your question? Would I, on the edges, would I give us like the answer to a problem? And then they, you got to reset it. Kind of like, that Not on this one that I think of. I can't think of it. I did this morning. I can't remember. It. Antoine, what do you fill in for length, width, and height? Mm. So we gotta write that shape. Yes. It's pretty easy. I did the it. The exact one that you did. <laughs> Kingston? No. That's not what I asked. What do you fill in for length, width, and height? London? Don't you need to find which one is like, oh, all of them are 10, right? Right, they're all 10. So in the next line for your word, you B equals 10 centimeters times 10 centimeters times 10 centimeters. I got cut off. Do you notice how I kept the V all the way the same? Now, Kingston, what is your answer? Oh. Centimeters what? Oh, Centimeters, Reese? Oh. What's 10 times 10 times 10? Oh, it's 20. <laughs> London? C U. Yeah. You can do that, but what does C U mean? Yeah, another word for Q. I like to do the three on top. But London is right. You can do a thousand C U centimeters for Q. I'm pretty sure you saw that in the book, didn't you? Same. Antoine. So you multiply it 10 times and then 10 times another 10? Yeah. Do you guys not know the trick to multiplying 10 numbers, 10s? You just put the one in front, then you just count the number of zeros and put the zeros behind the one. Any questions? 
Because remember, you're going to get your exit ticket, and I'm not going to let you leave until you get it done. Because you will have plenty of time to work on it. So make sure you understand and you ask questions. This is the time for that. All right. Example three. Who can read that for the class? Go ahead, Antoine. Find the volume of a rectangular prism that is four feet long, three feet wide, and two feet high. All right. Great. Great, a couple of these on your assignment where they don't give you the shape. Reese, what's your question? Um, your paper towel thing didn't work? Okay, so um, that's going to be a deduction. Why would you interrupt class for that? You're not dying. You're fine. So that's going to be a deduction. So, Reese, you have two deductions right now. London, I'm going to give you five payments for being asked to answer my questions. Kingston, two. Antoine, I'm going to give you two payments for reading. I'm going to give Mariah two payments for focusing up and keeping her voice off and tracking me. I get two payments to Destin for raising your hand to answer questions. I'm going to give two payments to London Fears and London Hollands because they, I can see them taking their own notes. All right. So find the volume, copy down the question, example three, copy down the question, find the volume of a rectangular prism that is four feet long, three feet wide, and two feet high. Okay. Now, underneath this question, you got Three steps. The first step, you have to rewrite what? What's the formula? London Hollands? I mean, London Henderson. Um, four, uh, I'm looking for the formula. Mari? Right. Don't forget the volume. So I'm going to say volume equals length times height, or what time? Volume equals length times width times height. Say it with me. Volume equals length times width times height. Again, volume equals length times width times height. Volume equals length times width times height. One more time. Volume equals length times width times height. Very important. All right, now, London Henderson, what do you fill in for length, width, and height? I, okay. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. London Hollins, can you go give three payments for London Henderson on Mrs. Seelman's board? Because I really enjoyed how she included the words, the labels as well. Three, four feet, three feet times. Two feet. Three. For three labels. That's awesome, London. Thank you so much for including those in your response. Now, all you have to do, multiply. What would four times three times two be? And uh, you have to say it with the label, the correct label. Monte, what? Not 24 feet. It's close. He's so close. But like I said, you have to have the correct label. Destiny? Correct. B equals 24 feet cubed. See, Camante, what you forgot? It's the Q part. Can't forget the Q, because on your exit ticket, if you wrote 24 feet, that's wrong. If you wrote 24, that's wrong. There's a big difference between 24, 24 feet, 24 feet squared, and 24 feet cubed. Very big differences in life. Antoine. So every time we get that, we just multiply it? Yep. That's all you're doing today is multiplying three numbers together. That's all you're doing. But you got to be able to find those numbers. 
because uh, one of the questions, at least, they don't give you all the numbers. You got to kind of look for it. Asia. If you need to, honey, you can stand up if that's going to help you stay awake. Any questions? All you're doing today is multiplying three numbers together. That's pretty much the same thing as a square, except you're just adding on, you're adding the height onto it. So when you look for volume, you're doing the same thing as area. You're just adding the height onto it, which is going to change the label from two to three. So it's going to be instead of two times two, it's two times two times two. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's almost the same exact thing as uh, as the area. It's just now we got depth. So for instance, the difference between this square or rectangle is that it's flat. Look at that. I even hurt my hand. Now I'm bleeding. I can't put my hand through it. Now with a volume, I can put my hand in it. See the difference? So see the difference? This is the area. I can't put my hand through it. This is volume. I can put my hand in it. See the difference? If you punch through the paper, you broke through the, the plane of existence, and now you're a cartoon. Bring it back. Great over here. Good, good, good. All right. Allison put, uh, put cubes together to build large cubes. She made a table to record the number of cubes. I'm going to skip this one. There's Because there's no question like it on your exit ticket, so I'm going to skip it. But I do want to talk to you one thing before you go to your exit ticket, because we didn't talk about it too much. Marquise, let's say, I'm just picking on you for no reason, but Marquise, let's just say you had a question where, let's go back to the other one actually, where two of these were missing. Like you had, you didn't have the length and you didn't have the width. Marquise, how, do you think you can think of a way you would find those lengths? Sorry, what? Let's say you didn't have the length and you didn't have the width. How would you find the length and width? Can anyone think of a way? Because on one of these, they'll only give you the height, but then they don't give you the length and width. Right, Mira? Again, I don't want to say you're sleeping, but some of you are looking like you're sleeping, and I'd rather you not fail. Maybe. King Sin, can you think of a way? I was um, right? And there's four lines on the, the first face, mm -hmm. but then there's another. I think there's another one. Kingston is right. So on the question on your exit ticket, it will give you the height, but it won't give you length and width. What you do is, this is a better picture for it, you count the number of squares. One. One, two, three, four, five. Does that match up with the five inches? Yes. Mm -hmm. On the side here, you got one, two, three. Does that match up with the three inches? Yes. So if they give you a shape that's made out of cubes that doesn't have the length and width, <laughs> someone in their own words explain what do you do to find the length and the width? Marquise? <clears throat> yes, go give yourself... Five payments. Thank you so much. Any questions on that? Today was, we had a rocky start, and I'm still a student.